Hey everyone, Hedgedog here. Today I want to dive in a little deeper into Astroneer and analyze all the different upgrades available to the Terrain tool. So the Terrain tool is the standard issue terrain deforming tool for all Astroneers. It's an exceptional tool that allows you to collect soil samples and to terraform the terrain as you see fit, whether to dig, elevate, or flatten the ground. Digging is just point and click, but for elevating and flattening, we need to have soil canister anywhere in the backpack, fill it with some soil by digging, and then using Control or Alt to flatten or elevate respectively. Sorry console players, I'm not sure exactly what the buttons are, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, the best way to get familiar with flattening and elevating is just messing around with them yourself. They're not very complicated. So the terrain tool has three slots that can fit any one slot item. And once you get a little further into the game, you'd notice there are quite a few different modifications, or mods for short, that can be used with the terrain tool as well. So how do they work? Let's dig in. The first thing we have to know is that while using the terrain tool in any mode, dig, elevate, or flatten, does not require power, using mods does. This is important because it means you need access to a stable source of power when working with mods or you'll find yourself stuck very quickly. So you either need to keep yourself tethered or have a power generator on you. Solar, wind, organic, power cells, whatever. Each mod drains your pack at a rate of one power bar every 1.3 seconds. So the whole pack drains in about 13 seconds. Using two mods drains the pack twice as fast and three mods three times as fast. If you're going to be using mods, you absolutely need a constant power supply. So what types of mods do we even have? We can roughly divide the different mods into two categories, enhancements and alterations. Enhancements don't change how the terrain tool works, but they do change its performance. These include the different drills, the wide and narrow mods, and the boost mod. Alterations change the very nature of the terrain tool and transform it into something entirely different. These include the inhibitor mod, alignment mod, and terrain analyzer. Let's take a look. The enhancement mods are pretty simple to understand from their names. The boost mod increases the terrain tool's speed. This means it digs faster, but it also elevates and flattens faster. The wide and narrow mods simply change the size of the terrain tool's reticle, so you can terraform wider or narrower chunks. Both can be placed at the same time, but only the one close to the top of the terrain tool will be active. The drill mods vary in strength and difficulty to craft. They range from 1 to 3, 1 being the weakest and 3 the strongest. There are certain types of terrains that are harder to dig with a regular terrain tool. The hard terrain will make digging a much slower task, and some terrains will prevent mining entirely. A powerful drill negates the effects of the hard terrain, essentially making digging just as easy and fast as normal terrain. The more powerful the drill, the better the performance. It's worth noting that using a drill on normal terrain does not increase the dig speed. You need a boost mod for that. The alterations change the nature of the terrain tool and are a bit more difficult to explain. The alignment mod is probably the most unintuitive mod of the bunch, but it's pretty simple to use once you understand what it's trying to do. So the alignment mod is used in two different modes to create perfectly flat surfaces relative to the planet's core. Now, since the planets in Astroneer are pretty small, there's a very gentle curve to this flat surface, but it's not really noticeable. Once an alignment mod is equipped, digging and elevating will only be done relative to the planet's core. This means the reticle gets locked in place and only moves up or down depending on if you're elevating or digging, respectively. When flattening, the tool no longer uses the targeted angle as its base and instead only takes the elevation as the base and from there creates the flat surface. Another way to use the tool is to construct perfectly straight walls. Distancing the reticle away from the player somewhat will change its shape from a circle to a square. This indicates that it will now flatten vertically instead of horizontally. Note that the direction of the wall is relative to the player so it's easy to make a cylinder around the player but a perfectly straight line wall would be a little more difficult to achieve. The terrain analyzer has a few interesting functions. First, let's go over how it works. Initially, the indicator on the mod is black, signifying that it has not been initialized. As soon as you start digging terrain, the terrain's color is locked into the terrain analyzer. 
The analyzer's indicator will increase while digging the same terrain color until it is full, at which point it will make a sound. Once the analyzer is full, it will change the terrain tool's behavior. When digging, only the terrain analyzer's color will be dug. Anything else remains untouched. When elevating, the elevated terrain will no longer be gray, but instead take the color of the analyzer. The terrain analyzer doesn't require filling up, it simply requires a certain amount of colored soil, and as soon as it has enough, it becomes active and uses the regular soil in your canister. More on what we can do with this mod in just a little bit. The inhibitor mod prevents the terrain tool from changing the terrain. This means no digging, no elevating, and no flattening. It does, however, allow collection of materials that are poking out of the ground without changing the terrain. So I guess that's nice. It doesn't seem like a very interesting tool until you start looking at mod combinations. Now, the terrain tool has three slots. This means up to three mods can be used simultaneously with a terrain tool. Some mods don't affect each other, but some combinations are very interesting. Let's take a look. The boost mod and the drill. Drill mods don't stack. Just like other mods, the one placed closer to the top of the tool takes effect. So there's no need to carry more than one. And if you are, place the best one at the top. If you still want to dig as fast as possible, combining a boost mod with a level 3 drill will make for extra speedy digging regardless of terrain. For an additional bonus, add a wide mod as well, but don't forget the power requirements. Terrain analyzer and inhibitor mod. Now this is a really cool and probably unexpected side effect of the inhibitor mod for most people. When combining the soil coloring capabilities of the terrain analyzer with the non-deformative ability of the inhibitor mod, you can actually paint the ground. This is a really neat trick. Not only can you deform the terrain as you see fit by digging and elevating and flattening the ground, but you can color it however we like, and even after it has already been created. For an additional bonus, you can use the wide mod to paint very quickly a large swath or the narrow mod for precise painting. It's worth noting that using a duplicated mod does not change that mod's effect. For example, using two boost mods won't result in triple speed, but rather one mod simply won't be active and also won't drain power. All right, this is it. This is a comprehensive guide to all modifications. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one.